Hey, there he is. Ben, what's going on, man? Glad you were able to jump on here. Uh, just a, some like slight miscommunications, and we were making some dinner, and I just, yeah, we were just, uh, yeah. All good. That's on me. All good. No worries. Well, we'll jump into it real quick because we, we don't have too much time, unfortunately, but we'll jump into it real quick. Um, what is it with Jonesboro? What is it about that course that you just seem to end up always putting yourself towards the top? There's back-to-back years finishing in second place there. Do you, can you put your finger on anything? Uh, I would have to say just the course itself, the, the, the distances and the, the placements that you need to put yourself into score uh, just really suit my game very well. Um, the, and plus the, some of the disc selections that I make, you know, with uh, the headwind conditions, because it's it always seems like every hole you play, it's always a headwind. And mm-hmm. a lot of the discs that I choose seem to favor a lot of the holes that um, some guys just don't really play that well. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, we talk about Calvin's distance, AB's distance. Your name doesn't really ever get thrown in there, and it probably should. Like, you, you throw the disc really far. And I don't, I don't think a lot of people know that. I mean, I've been around for a long time and the the level of distance that those guys have, I, I feel like they are on a, another level. Like I, mm-hmm. I sometimes feel like I can hang, but to do it on the consistency that they do, like sometimes I, I look at what AB and Calvin do and I'm like, dang, like they throw far, but you're right. I, I do, I do throw far. I, I feel like my distance should be respected, but in no way, shape, or form do I feel like I should be like on the same. Well, level. AB is like on a different atmosphere. It, yeah, he's level. Yeah, we. I, the only person that I've ever seen in person, uh, the only yeah, the only guy I've, I've seen in person have his speed is David Wiggins. That's that's, and he doesn't really tour. So there's not really anyone on tour that's got the speed that AB does. No, not right now. Well, yeah, not on tour. I mean, I've seen I've seen some some guys that that can rip there's a there's a, a guy from europe uh his name's rasmus um i'm gonna oh yes he he does he does rip yeah you're right i rips a disc so hard um far forehand and backhand and he's he's pretty close to the a b conversation yeah it's it's different though because i feel like honestly when i watch ben throw compared to even anthony anthony has this down tempo that he's doing that is just incredible right now with the control but Ben's effortless power yeah. is beautiful to watch. Like on coverage this this season, for example, we went to uh, we watched uh, old hole one. Um, what is it? Third eleven now, hole eleven. And the way that you throw that is just like poetic. It's just like, and I'm like, is that getting there? And then sure enough, it's all the mm-hmm. way down there. And so to me, it looks different. It looks like, in my opinion, top five cleanest forms I've ever seen ever is Ben Calloway as far as, as far as backhand goes. Yeah, definitely, definitely a good one. If you're looking at you know, who should I mimic off of? Definitely, definitely <laughs> yes. watch his throws in slow-mo. All right, let's jump to some, oh, but, but I, I think that could have hurt them because then they go out and they try to throw it like 2% oh, yeah. and it goes like, you know, 230 feet. Oh, yeah. like, wait, wait. <laughs> before we, before we move on, Paul, you, you say that it's like the smoothest form, dude. I feel like I'm trying to rip that thing. Like, so, yeah. like I, I, I kind of sometimes want it to, to look like I'm trying to rip the disc, but even when I try to like rip it, <laughs> apparently it just looks, you know, so poetic and, but it still goes far. So you have that going for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is, it is very frustrating. When I take like Kelsey out and I'm like, okay, what you're doing right now, I want you to rotate. I want you to do everything quicker. And she's like, okay. And then she does it. And I'm like, you look so slow. You look like you're not doing anything. Uh, but you you get the distance. So I don't know. I don't if you if you can somehow figure out how to make it look like you're throwing hard, I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We want to see that. That might be, that might be serious distance. I've been trying for 15 years. I, 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 <laughs> um, all right. So let's jump into this final round. We're going to actually fast forward straight into hole 11. Um, right. What is your take? You know, we saw Gannon post something. I think it was a response in one of the Facebook forums where someone was basically saying like, Hey, maybe it's at the baskets. Maybe it's the player. And he's like, listen, I know I putt hard, 
but also these baskets suck. So like, what, what is your take on these baskets? Cause that putt that you had on seven uh, or on a whole 11 guys, it was, if you didn't see it, it was like seven feet away. And it's one that we were on here. Wh- when was that Yuli? It was um, wh- whose putt was that? Where it was like, they went up high and it kind of like swung in and came back and they like jammed it in there. And we were talking about how like, that's kind of on them. That wasn't the case here. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a fast putt. What's your take on the baskets here, Ben? Do we have a basket problem? Um, I don't have the answer as far as like what a good basket would be. Uh, these, these, I don't feel like are the answer. The chains are definitely pretty light. Um, for, for me, as far as when the, when the putt came out, like it was a big shock, but that's just a part of the game. You know, I've been, Paul can attest to this. We've been playing disc golf for so many years. We've been playing, we've played on Mach 1s and Mach 3s where that was just the custom. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like you have to adjust, but in those conditions with that wind, I mean, there's, I don't even know if that would have stuck on a Mach X. You know, it's just sometimes the disc just does some funny, funky things with the wind and it was just really unfortunate. Uh, But when it happened, I was in shock. Uh, but to be honest, it didn't even really bother me. Like when it happened, I was just like, all right, let's just move on, <laughs> go to the next hole. I, I couldn't do anything. Were you, were you aware of like where you were right there? Like if you, did you know that if that putt goes in yet, you have a two shot lead with seven yeah. holes to play. I knew exactly where I was uh, right before I threw that shot. Um, I was checking scores and I was like, you know, I could, I might be able to, you know, gain some momentum on this back nine. You know, I, I feel very confident in this stretch. And when I threw that shot, I was like, that's so good. Mm. And all right, well, here comes a stroke. Like, obviously you're thinking you got a stroke. I threw it into the bullseye. Of course. Yeah. So when that happened, I was like, okay, well, just, I, there's nothing I could do. Just shake it off and move on to the next hole. Um, a lot of people have actually been commenting about that and like blowing it way out of proportion I feel like because it doesn't, it didn't bother me in the moment. It really didn't like it, it sucked. But I just, one thing that a lot of people don't understand is like those next three holes, uh, 12, 13 and 14, I was only one down for the tournament going into them. Those and are hard holes. Those are hard birdie holes. They're very hard birdie holes, uh, especially in those conditions. So mm-hmm. the fact that I, you know, buckled down after that spit out and then went birdie, birdie, birdie. I'm like, yeah, it, it didn't even phase me. Honestly, unfortunately in disc golf right now, we do have a lot of people that kind of talk about disc golf, but don't actually watch disc golf or know what they're talking about. So uh, I can see how that could sometimes be frustrating when people are saying like, Oh, well he missed that putt. And like, that's why he played bad. The last the next three holes. It's like, well, those holes are kind of tough to get anyways. Right. So let's, let, let's jump here. I know this is something that Yuli definitely wants to discuss the decision to lay up on hole 14. You, it looked like from the camera angle, it looked like 40 feet, maybe 45 feet. Yeah, roughly something like that. W- what was, what was the idea there? What was going, what, what was the reasoning behind that? Uh, my, my whole reasoning was I, I had a two stroke lead at that point. I, I checked scores and I was two strokes ahead. And so I was thinking in my brain, you know, I haven't had the best of luck with rollaways and the, the putt was, the putt was long. It was a pretty strong right to left win. And I, mm-hmm. I actually just switched to the Kratos before this event started. So I'm actually still learning the disc from like circle two circle one's pretty easy, but circle two has been a bit of a struggle for me because it's way more stable than the disc that I used to put with, with, uh, which was the roach mm. with a very straight putter. So in a tailwind, I'm like, just, you know, just rifle it. It'll go in the basket. But with the Kratos, it's, it has a lot more glide and a lot more stability in the flight. So I didn't really feel that comfortable, but as soon as I landed on the Island, I made the decision of I'm just laying up for birdie. Cause I felt very confident going into the next stretch of holes that, you know, I, I can probably birdie like these next, three or four and have a good chance at winning if at the worst tie for the lead. Yeah. I mean, it, that does make sense. And where you have to have those guys play super and ultra aggressive to come and catch you. If you end up playing right. uh, those last several holes, uh, like you kind of mentioned now, obviously you go on to miss the putt on hole 15, but then 
and this is where I think the people that were like, oh, he missed that short putt. This is where they just don't really understand because if that was the case, missing that putt on hole 15, you don't make the putt on hole 16. You don't right. make the putt on hole 17. Right. And you, you cash both of those in um, a little of, of an unlucky break. I would say maybe on 17, you know, like if that hits a little bit of like some thick grass there, maybe it stays in bounds. Possibly. Um, any thoughts on 18 to lay up Would, did that ever cross your mind of like, no, the, 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 the thought of laying up on 18 never crossed my mind. Cause I, in my brain, I'm thinking a B and Calvin, they're going to birdie 16, 17, 18. Like they're just too mm. good of players. They've been, they've been playing those holes so well. I got to play with Calvin the second round and he, you know, he was filleting 16 and 17. He had a little bit of struggles on 18, but I knew that a B was just going to come in with uh, especially with that putt that I, that he made on uh, 14 huge mm. momentum swing. So I knew that he was going to be coming in with just everything that he has to finish out the event. So I, in my brain, I'm like birdie or, you know, second place. Hmm. I was going to say, size, are we good by right now? Oh, everything's fine. We're, we're live. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was just making sure. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I think. I think with how AB was playing that final hole, I think that definitely probably elevated the pressure, right? To force your hand there a little bit. And that's where it's like, man, if you would have, if you would have changed up how uh, a couple of those putts go earlier on, then you almost play that hole for par because right. you force them to have to like make it right. And, and that's actually one thing that I wanted to say as well. Like if I made the putt on 15, and if I put, you know, had birdied 15, 16, 17, mm -hmm. I, I probably would have thought about laying up. Cause then I think AB would have had to finish birdie, 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 just to tie me, I think, mm. or, or, uh, I, I think it was, I would have been 25 down. Uh, I don't think yeah. he could have caught, I don't think he could have caught you. Yeah. No, you know, I, I couldn't, I, I yeah. can't remember at this time. Yeah. If you would have, if you would have made that the seven footer made the putt on the Island hole and then maybe got one more birdie and didn't bogey the final hole, I think you win by one or two. Gotcha. Okay. That makes, yeah, that makes more sense. Though. So I do have a question though, going kind of back to uh, the layup on the par five. Mm -hmm. Cause now obviously hindsight's 2020, but looking back at it, now you get into the same position. Are you going to make that decision to lay that up or cause my, my thoughts are like this, like I cover every single lead card that there's ever been for the last however many years. So I see these things play out yeah. and I see how aggressive everybody is. You know, you watch a B right after you lay that up, he runs it. He's in a position where he has to obviously, right. but I also think that he runs it even if, he's in a battle and he has the big lead or something or a two stroke lead. And there's somebody chasing. I still think that those guys run that putt because of how aggressive these players are. You cannot count in my opinion on people missing holes because you have three guys. I would think in my mind, one of these guys is yeah. getting all of them. One of them's playing six under for the last five holes. So that's what I kind of have to do. And, so Hein is there is there what do you take away from from these things that occurred like the the layup and then the miss putt and then unfortunate thing on 18 and, and all that stuff like what you're going to get into that position again what has been Callaway going to do differently in those situations is it a mindset or is it just like no I'm going to do my thing and get in those positions and roll well to be I mean to be honest I don't really think I I would probably, I probably would make the same decision. I mean, I had all the momentum yes. for me. And like I said, if, if I had, I mean, I obviously hindsight is 2020. If I made the put on 15, I birdie 16 and I did have an unfortunate, like little kick, you know, maybe a little skip on 17. I mean, what would I have been like 26 down or something like that? Mm -hmm. um, then yeah, I would lay up on 18. I, I don't, I felt very confident and just, in the moment on every single shot. And it was, it was actually a very surreal time 
for for my disc golf career. But I don't I don't think I would have changed anything different about that final round, except the only one that sticks out is hole eighteen. That's the only one I would have changed. By by laying up, you're saying? Yeah. Well, uh, no, I probably would have went up the gut with up my, the middle. I probably would have went up the gut with the Nuke OS rather than trying to go with the Heiser because the decision on that was I I practiced the Heiser a lot in practice and it was uh, my go-to shot. But that Nuke OS that I was throwing that day was just it was so clutch in so many moments and so many uh, opportunities. Would, old hole one is what the, the like that shot. Yeah. I threw it. I threw it on so many different. Uh, I threw it on so many shots on that back nine that you know got me so many opportunities to, to gain birdie. So, but I went against. I went against. Not. I didn't really go against it. I just. I went with what I thought was the right decision, and ultimately, it just wasn't. Yeah. No, How are you a- feeling on that drives? Were the nerves up? Because obviously, you're in a position. You birdie. You're almost guaranteed playoff at worst. Like, where was that? Did that have an effect on your shot or were you still very in the moment? Cause a lot of things happen kind of down the stretch that could really get into your mind and be like, why does this happen to me? You know, like, why are these things happening to me? So you, you're talking about an 18, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I felt very in the moment with it. I think what happened was because I was leaning so much on that nuke OS, I was throwing a lot flatter shots like I wasn't throwing as much high. I was throwing very flat and uh, like my body was probably maybe used to that. So then when I stepped up with a completely different disc um, on hole 18, I tried to throw like a high hyzer, which, you know, we should be able to do. We're professional athletes. We know how to throw every angles, but sometimes you have miscues. And I think my body just didn't, <laughs> my body didn't do what I wanted it to happen in my mind. And I just threw it too flat. Which, which is exactly how yeah. the Duke OS all day long. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think, that like, looking back on it, I think that is ultimately what happened because if you look at the shot, it, it looked exactly like how I was throwing that Nuke OS on the uh, previous holes all day. So, but ultimately, you know, I don't know if I, I mean, that's like the only thing that sticks out to me that, that I would have changed. I don't, I don't think I would have done much of anything different during the round. I thought I played exactly the way how i envisioned myself playing on that final day yeah it was a fun round and i think a lot of people watching and maybe you know tuning into disc golf for the first time whatever and seeing you kind of on coverage there i think they enjoyed watching you play you your game is fun to watch there are some people where you're kind of like "Ah, a little snooze fest but uh it's definitely fun to watch (laughs) you up there so uh i think a lot of us are rooting for you to kind of continue uh, this onward trend of, of putting yourself in contention. But before we let you go, I've had multiple people ask me to uh, get this from you before you leave. I've heard that you do a really good Calvin impersonation. Oh. We, and we just had Calvin on. So before, before we let you go, let's, let's, let's hear your Calvin impersonation here. <clears throat> All right. Hold on. I got to get into character. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get into character. Calvin character here. <laughs> It's not, I got really long hair, so it's not exactly like him. <clears throat> um, I mean, I didn't win Jonesboro, but you know, that's okay. Uh, second's pretty good, but you know, win some, lose some, but um, I just didn't play the the greatest final round. Um. But it's okay. Uh, I'm still a three-time champ, so. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really good. Wow! That when did you, when did you know you could do that? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need to see an Instagram uh, reel of you. Uh, uh, you and Calvin talking to each other. That's, I need to see a conversation. I, I, I talked to him about it. I'm like, we should, we should do this. And he's like, yeah, just let me know. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I also, (laughs) I've also told him that if he ever needs a stand in for any of his interviews, you know, I'm available. Oh my gosh. That would be incredible. (laughs) That would be incredible. Well, you have to do that. And it's just me. Yeah. 
wig. <laughs> that was really, I didn't know what to expect. That was really good. So that was awesome. But um, uh, anything to shout out, Ben, before we let you go? Any uh, discs or anything like that it's through the pipeline? Uh, yeah, actually, if my, if I don't know if my wife and daughter are watching, but I'd like to give a shout out to them. Uh, Sarah and Ruby, I love you guys. Uh, thank you for all the support that you give me. Uh, shout out to my sponsors, Discraft, Ledgestone, Grip Equipment, Culture Shock Barbershop. If anybody would like to purchase any of my uh, discs from Ledgestone, you can go to shopledgestone.com and uh, type in Ben Calloway. There's plenty of merchandise on there. Um, otherwise, if you want to follow me on Instagram with my endeavors on disc golf, you can go follow me there at Benjamin Calloway DG. And also, you know, shout out to you guys for having me on. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, and make sure you follow Ben on Instagram right now, guys, because that's where the skit, the Calvin meets Calvin skits coming on his Instagram. So oh, yeah. give that give that a follow. But uh, yeah, Ben, thank you. That was fun, brother. And uh, are you playing? Are you playing this week? Are you doing the Nashville? Yeah, we're here in Nashville right now. I'm here with all the Finns. Uh, nice. So it's a full house, but yeah, it's it's yeah, we're looking forward to it. Nice. Well, good luck out there, and uh, yeah, I'll probably see you up in uh, Peoria. Sounds good. Thank you All much. Right, take it easy, brother.